this question about finances comes up a lot, especially when it comes to the relationships and dating. So this was a question that was asked in my inbox uh, on Twitter. So let's jump into this as I was doing some research. According to PNC Insights, and, and that's a bank, uh, PNC, they talked about how your money personality affects your financial health. Now, when it comes to making, because, you know, the buzzword nowadays, everybody's talking about six figures, six figures, I need to make six figures. But statistically, I don't think that that number is high when it comes to how many people are six-figure income earners. And then on top of that, with today's economy in a way, um, with the housing market and all these different things, like six figures, $100,000 a year is not a lot of money considering. And then sometimes it even takes two households to make $100,000 a year. So if you are making $100,000 a year on your own, you are in, in an elite class. But I will say a lot of that comes with money management. And I'm going to jump into this, this blog as well from PNC Insights, because I do want to talk about it. But I also want to address that when it comes to finances, Sure, if you date, if you're making six figures and you want to date someone on your level financially who's making six figures, you have to ask yourself, yeah, we might match each other financially, but what 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 are the other things that come into play? Are you tired of dating the same person, just different faces? Are you tired of people wasting your time in this whole dating process? Do you desire to marry one day? I created this five-part video series entitled Dating Intentionally, Five Ways to Know They Are the One for You. You can get it now in the comments section below. You will see it is five, the number five, ways to know dot podia dot com. I created this five-part video series with you in mind. Now let's get back into today's podcast episode. Am I attracted to them? Do we share the same morals and values? Uh, are we going to have kids together? Do you know one of us already have kids? These different things have to come into question. So when it comes to finances, you have to really consider the other factors too, because money can be a deal breaker in marriage and relationships, but we have to be agreeable uh, when the two become one and we talk about finances, because you got to have that talk every every two weeks or whenever you get paid so we got to be on the same page in this thing because and I tweeted this earlier I know a couple of six figure income makers who live paycheck to paycheck it's not how much you make but it's how much you spend so the question is, is valid should I date someone on my on the same financial level as me but let's talk about these different habits when it comes to money because um, I think we think once we make more money that I'm going to be a better steward over the money that I have. But it's it actually starts with, say, childhood. If you haven't been brought up about how to manage money and what does that look like and, and credit card debt, all these different things. Are you taught these things? Um, I've spent some years and watching Dave Ramsey. I'm sure a lot of you know who Dave Ramsey is, a financial coach. And I've learned a lot of, from him as far as getting out of debt, um, just different things when it comes to saving. Um, so if you don't know who Dave Ramsey is, I'm pretty sure some of you do know. But if not, make sure you check him out because uh, he's going to help you in that area of finances. Because if we don't have someone who can help us with finances, we, we would think that just because I make a lot of money, uh, I could just live any way I want to, but I know that there's people who make less money who actually are better stewards than people who make more money. So again, it's not how much you make, but it's how much you spend. So according to PNC Insights, I want to talk about this and that they talk about that there are money personality types. And I thought this was interesting. You have four um common money personality types and here they are according to pnc insights you have spenders you have savers you have amassers 
and you have avoiders. Now, they're going to discuss these more in detail, and let's talk about them. Spenders, are they enjoy spending money on themselves and others. They tend to do so freely and sometimes impulsively. Now, let me know in the comment section if you are one of these four. Savers are careful with their money and believe in the importance of cutting costs and setting aside money for a rainy day. Money hoarders are an extreme example of savers. They're ultra th thrifty and live to save. Amassers. Amassers are a little different from savers. They like to save money, but they also look at the bigger picture, such as building wealth and financial security for the long term. Avoiders is the last one. Money avoiders take hands off to a new level. They don't want to think about money, talk about it, or be hands on with managing it. So either you're one or the four. Now, if you are making a lot of money, you are a six figure income earner, or if you make less, more than likely you, are, you fall in one of these four categories. And if you are with someone who are different than you, that's where the tension can happen because one of the reasons for a divorce is finances and people not being agreeable. So if you, you have to know whoever you get into a relationship, which one of these four that they are. And also they talk about in this blog, pros and cons of dating your financial opposite. And they talk about, uh, they talk about, for instance, you may have you may each have a certain money deal breakers that could make the relationship a no-go. That might include things like, number one, being in debt. These are conversations that you, you must have. Having a poor credit score, lying or hiding money, and being unwilling to discuss money. Because when we talk about credit, rarely do we talk about that when it comes to marriage. What's, what's your credit score? Uh, some people do that. Some people go into premarital counseling and they will ask about their credit score. And some people are ashamed of their credit score because they don't value it. Right. But if you value your credit and say the person you're about to marry that they don't going into a marriage, this can really hinder you because you might want to buy property, different things of that nature. But if you aren't on the same page, this can cause a lot of tension. So Hopefully uh, I answered this question, but you want to know about the different spending types and which type of person you are, because money at the end of the day is just a tool. I think it's money starts mentally. It starts the way you were raised and the way you view money in your mind. So either you are a spender, a saver, an amasser, or an avoider. And if you do know these things, this is going to help your relationship tremendously and being prosperous for your future. So hopefully this video was able to help someone. If you hit the subscribe button, make sure that you share this with a friend. We just crossed over 1,500 subscribers, YouTube subscribers. So I appreciate all the new brave hearts who subscribe to the channel and has been rocking with us. I appreciate you more than you know. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. I want to make sure we get the ratings up. We want to get those ratings up. If you leave a rating and review, that'll put you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card.